I'm Rich Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. We are joined by a special guest today, Roger Cloud from Cloud Microphones is here. Hey, good to see you, Mitch. Great Thanks. to see you. You were just uh, doing a meeting with the uh, sales engineers, showing off the uh, cool gear. Yes, it was great. And uh, you got something new to show us here. We do. We have the new Cloudlifter ZI. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. But first, tell us a little bit about the company. Where did the idea come from for the original Cloudlifter that you, uh, you came out with? Well, it was actually kind of an accident. Um, as you know, we make uh, high quality ribbon microphones mm -hmm. and we were determined to have a, an active ribbon microphone before we launched the company we wanted to launch and have an active ribbon microphone so we prototyped various circuits and pushed ourselves because it had to be it had to reach a, a certain a certain level of quality or, sure. or it just wasn't going to happen we were going to do passive mics if we couldn't uh, achieve uh, the, the type of uh, standard that we were looking for mm -hmm. but fortunately we did and when we first prototyped the circuit put it in this little box to try it out with our passive prototype microphones. And my goodness, we plugged the, <laughs> when we plugged that into that box, we just immediately knew right. that that box was a really special thing. Mm -hmm. So that's how the cloud lifter came to be. Right, right. The, uh, you mentioned the, the microphones, and the company actually has a legacy that reaches back to the original RCAs, right? That's correct. Um, Steven Sank helped design uh, our, our line of ribbon microphones and his father John R. Sank uh, was the head of acoustical engineering at RCA, mm -hmm. designed many of the classic uh, RCA ribbon microphones in the later part of the era, uh, including the BK-11, the BK-10A and, and others. Right, right. So what is the benefit of having something like the Cloudlifter with, first of all, a ribbon microphone? Well, as, as, uh, as you know, ribbon microphones are really low in sensitivity and, and difficult to amplify. You need a lot of gain mm -hmm. from your preamp. So by having uh, 25 decibels of ultra clean class A discrete gain in line before it reaches the preamp, you've just tilted the balance back in your favor. Now you have your choice of, of preamps based on the sonic character of those preamps and not necessarily on how much gain they can produce. Right, right. So it's kind of like you're taking those vintage or passive ribbon microphones and making them active. That's correct, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. Uh, but the way the cloud lifter is designed, it's a, a really innovative circuit or patented circuit. Basically, literally becomes an extension of your preamps gain stage, mm -hmm. and we do so without the need for having capacitors and resistors in the actual audio path itself. So, what the the result is that you're you're going through the um, the circuit. Uh, and, and just going through the actual amplifier components and nothing else. So right. you, you, really, you really are able to defeat the noise because the, the noise floor sits around minus 105 dB, which is incredibly low. Right. And you, know, you put that against about a 25 dB gain and now the, the balance has been tilted in your favor. Sure, sure. And it's not just ribbon mics. The right, SM57 is just a, a beast right. with this thing. I mean, it turns it into the sensitivity of an SM57 through a cloud lifter is on par with the world's best condenser microphone. So it gives you the sensitivity of a condenser, but you still have the tone of the dynamic, which in many cases can be much more musical depending on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it, it's uh, the question often comes up, I've got a really cool preamplifier. I know what it sounds like. I've got a, maybe I've got one that is, the manufacturer says is straight wire with gain, you know, kind of thing, or I've got one that's really colored and I like that. Why do I want to use a cloud lifter with that? You're going to get a lot more of the natural microphone sound itself and less of the preamp coloration. Okay. Um, it's great if you have a budget pre and you're having to crank the gain, being able to turn the gain down is going to significantly reduce your noise floor, give you a much more uh, round and whole frequency response of the microphone. Mm -hmm. But if you have a, a, a preamplifier that is at a, a much higher level, you can still benefit dramatically from the cloud lifter because every preamp adds some coloration and the cloud lifter gives you the opportunity to reduce the coloration of the preamp that you're using by significantly turning down the gain and it can be really helpful too when you're uh, if, if for an example if you were using something like an SM57 mm -hmm. on a finger-picked soft acoustic guitar at a, a foot or two away where there's some right. distance you're gonna get way above that noise floor and be able to do that successfully whether you're using a budget pre or a high-end pre. Right, right. Something I've, I've uh, encountered a lot of times in my recordings is with classical guitar. It's such oh, a, a low volume right. instrument and miking, by the time you get it mic'd up and run through a preamp, you've got to crank the preamp way sure. up. And any preamp is going to have noise when you turn it up that far, it's you're getting true. up to the top reaches of the gain control. Right. So having something like this really makes a huge difference to be able to, to have an initial stage before it even goes into that preamplifier. Absolutely, because your favorite preamp, uh, regardless of 
of the level, if it's a budget pre or a, a really high-end expensive preamp, it's going to be able to operate more in its comfort zone. Right. Uh, even our budget, even budget preamps sound much better when the gain is significantly lowered than they do when you're really pushing it to its upper gain range. Right, right. Now you've mentioned ribbons, you've mentioned dynamics. Can this be used with condenser mics? It can be used with condenser microphones that have their own power supply, such as a tube condenser, a battery-powered shotgun, or a small diaphragm condenser, mm -hmm. or some other condenser that might, may have its own power supply. It could be used plug and play. And right. with condensers that require 48 volts phantom power, the cloud lifter does not pass phantom power through to the microphone, which is actually a feature because it's protecting your ribbon microphone from right. potential exposure. You know, it takes the very thing that's dangerous to the ribbon microphone and turns it into the what they need, which is gain. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do hear from people um, occasionally that are using the cloud lifter with a phantom power condenser by using an external phantom supply with that. Um, condenser microphone sure. between the cloud lifter and and the uh, preamp and that's usually in circumstances where even though they have a condenser microphone they're recording sources and they still can't get enough gain to overcome the, the self noise of the preamp they're using and so some people right. will go through that extra step to add the phantom supply. To exactly what I was talking about with the classical guitar. Exactly. The, the level is so low, right? right? One of the questions that comes up often with the, the CL1, CL, CL2, CL4 is should that be placed right with the microphone or can you run it back at the console if you're in a live situation? Or should it be out in the studio when you're tracking or should it be in the control room? Does it have to be with the microphone to work? Absolutely not. Uh, you, can, you can certainly run it from your live soundboard in a live setting or from your control room in your studio. When we talk about long cable runs, we're not talking about 50, 75, 100 feet. Mm -hmm. We're talking about several hundred feet. Okay. So if, if you have to a cable run of several hundred feet, there may be some advantage that you can measure uh, by having it closer to the, the microphone side of things. Mm -hmm. But anything up to, up to 75, 100 feet, there's not going to be any uh, noticeable uh, audio uh, effects on the audio and okay. you can certainly have it in the control room especially with the Z products where you might want to fine-tune and control the input loading to, to, to get the desired tonal effect that you're looking for it could be useful to have it right there in the control room so that the uh, sound engineer can dial that in. Sure. CL4 rack is a, f a fine example of that where you know it it, it, it may, you may want to have it in your rack next to your uh, console in a live situation. And if you're only running 100 feet or so, you're, you're fine. Sure. Um, and I like to, to, to put it this way, that uh, you can have as much length of the cable on the input of the cloud lifter as you would with any other preamp. Okay, right, right. Well, there's a couple of myths dispelled. That's right correct. <laughs> that, 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 is, that is a myth. And, um, you know, that said, if there is some issue, some extreme issue in the environment where you're in, you can overcome it by potentially by having it next to the microphone. Sure, such so you as, have that option. To such as really poor wiring or, or some sort of electromagnetic interference or something like that. But in, in most cases, you're you're fine to have it at right. the console. All right, great, great. So you, you mentioned the Z products. We have the ZI here, but that's not the first Z product. What is the uh, the, the original one? The original Cloudlifter Z um, is very similar to the ZI, except it only it's like the CL1 only works with microphones. Mm -hmm. It has input loading from 150 ohms up to 15,000 ohms. And what that essentially does is give you massive control of your tone. Mm -hmm. When you load uh, something down really low to, to like 150 ohms, for example, um, you're going to bring uh, the character of the mid-range forward more, and you're going to you're going to have a little uh, more um, smoothness on the top end, and, and the the bass response is going to feel a little tighter, and it's just going to have a kind of a darker, warmer sound. If you go the other way to the extremes, the bass just explodes, the top end becomes more aggressive. So both things are useful, and with the the continuously variable Z knob, mm -hmm. you can dial in however much of either effect and find the perfect spot for. The thing that you're recording. It's, it's not about matching your impedance at all. It's really about listening to it with your ear. It's so intuitive, incredibly easy to use. Right. Uh, people learn more in 15 seconds about impedance with the cloud lifter Z than they may have, you know, could have learned possibly from studying in college for years. You know, right. I hear that over and over again. Uh, myself included, when we prototyped it, 
it was it became really obvious as soon as you start turning that knob what what's happening to your sound so right right you mentioned uh, earlier you were talking about earlier that uh, some other uh, manufacturers have items with switchable impedance this is continuous and it allows you to find those sweet spots that's as correct. opposed to predetermined uh, values that are in there is there one sweet spot for a microphone or is as you turn that knob are you going to hear different things jump out at you all the spots are sweet uh, it's really hard to make it sound bad mm -hmm. uh, it's just about it's it's about what 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 is what is the flavor you're looking for for the particular track? You may have one source with the same microphone uh, through the same preamp where you like one setting, but then you you move to a different sound source and you might want something entirely different. Right. For instance, with an acoustic guitar, if it's if it's too bright and, and edgy, you might want to go really low in impedance and bring forward that mid range and have it more focused in the mid range. Um, Another example, if it's something that's too soft and too dull and you want to brighten it up a little bit, you can go the other way. Mm -hmm. and, and so it really just depends. You know, with one singer, uh, it may sound good at one setting, um, and, you know, but with, with someone with a really sort of a, a light and um, uh, more of a muffled voice, you may go the other way to bring out more of the brightness. Sure. Someone that has a really sharp, uh, high-end high sort of uh, voice, you may want to go the other way and just smooth it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, is that only going to make a difference with a passive ribbon mic, or does it also affect dynamic mics? Oh, it absolutely affects dynamic microphones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the SM7B is a classic example that people use the cloud lifter with a lot, but even like an SM58 uh, or or some other you know dynamic microphone, it, it basically um, any passive microphone, it's it's going to have a dramatic effect. Right. On, on the on the tone, the way that you use the impedance, right. and the high pass filter is also continuously variable. When you have it engaged, it's affecting both the impedance and the high pass frequency at the same time. So it, it, it's kind of your one knob solution, and it's incredibly intuitive and easy to use. Right, right. So we've been focusing on microphones, but today we're also looking at the ZI, which is a direct box version of this. Tell us what this is about. Well, the ZI uh, retains all the features of the Cloudlifter Z that you. Uh, that it's known for with microphones, mm -hmm. uh, and additionally adds uh, high Z input. It's a, com a Neutrik combo jack that accepts both a quarter inch or an XLR. And so when you use it with a quarter inch, you are routing through a step down, uh, really high quality step down transformer made by Cinemag in California. Mm -hmm. And that in turn feeds into the very Z loading interface of the cloud lifter. And <clears throat> when you're using the high Z input, your loading varies on, on the dial from about uh, 15K all the way up to over one meg. Right. And so you've got this huge range of uh, impedance at your fingertips. And what that translates to is just massive tone control. Right, right. Yeah. Now you were, you were demonstrating with a, uh, with a bass guitar uh, some of the difference as you, as you change that. Because most, most like guitar amplifiers and pedals have a very high input impedance. Sure. And so when you drop that way down, that's a dramatic difference as far sure as what is. the pickup is seeing. That's right, and it can be really useful with piezo pickups, acoustic pickups, uh, especially low gain pickups, you right. know, things that need a lot of gain that are difficult to amplify. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, once again, when you, when you turn that, that dial and you go really low, you're, most of the time you're getting a more forward mid-range and uh, more, con more tightness in the bass response and a little, a little bit of... Um, uh, more mellow on the top, you know, the ed the edge seems to kind of smooth out a little bit, and then you go the other way, and it just it does it does exactly the opposite. Huge bass response, uh, much more aggression on the top end, and the tonal variations that you can get with the Z, uh, the very Z knob, is different than you could ever get with any kind of an e EQ. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you can do in post. This is if you really want that impedance magic. This is your box. Right, right, very cool. And then you augment that with, as you mentioned, there's a high-pass filter right. that does dramatic things as you turn that, uh, that Z knob also. It's, it's quite dramatic. When you engage the high-pass filter and you go really low in impedance, the high-pass frequency roll-off rises so that you can go deep in the mid-range and really focus on um, that, that part of your frequency response, especially, especially useful when you're trying to fit into a mix. You don't want a lot of that low end rubbish. If you go the other way and, and go really high in impedance, you're mostly affecting the subsonics. But the, the, the beauty of it is having that continuously variable Z control and v continuously variable high pass filter, you're able to dial it in just to that perfect spot and just shape right. it just the, way you, just the way you need it to be. Right, right, very powerful.
One of the other things that this has that most direct boxes don't have is uh, selectable output levels as well. That's correct. Um, you know, we did that. Uh, first of all, this, this, as, as I said, this, this box works with microphones just the same way as the Cloudlifter Z. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you're recording, uh, say, an SM57, on a snare drum, you might not need 25 decibels of gain, but you may want to take in, take advantage of all that impedance magic that can happen. Right. Um, so you can lower the gain by having three different levels. You can change it uh, with a microphone. It's about 6, 12, and 25 decibels between the uh, minimum, more, and maximum position. With an instrument, it's a little bit less because of the step-down transformer. Um, you know, you lose a little bit of gain with that, but then you make up for it. Uh, with the Class A discrete gain stage, and you actually end up with a net gain of about um, about three six or fifteen okay. uh, dB with the minimum, more, and maximum positions. Now, one of the interesting things about the output selection is that when you're when you're selecting the output, you're you're changing the level, but you're doing so by changing the output impedance. Hmm. So, you know, the way the cloud lifters work in the maximum position of the Z, Z products and in, in the uh, fixed settings of the Cloudlifter CL1, uh, the, the output impedance of the Cloudlifter is actually determined by the input impedance of your preamp. Okay. So if you're using a Cloudlifter with a really unusually high impedance preamp, you, you, um, and, you, and you feel that it's, it's, it's starting to affect the frequency response or your cable run is extremely long, you can actually lower the impedance by switching the switch. <laughs> if you, in maximum position, as I said, it's, it's determined by the input impedance of the preamp, but when you go down to the more position or the minimum position, you're basically getting 1,500 ohms output impedance or 750 ohms output impedance, respectively. Right. And, and that can be incredibly useful if, um, like I said, you're going into a extremely high impedance uh, preamp that's maybe a little too high that for, for that particular application. Right, right, very cool. Such powerful boxes, they're really the kind of thing that uh, you just want to have in your gig bag, you want to have a few of those around your studio because they're yeah. such problem solvers, plus they allow you to really go in and shape the sounds, like especially this one, right. allow you to go in and just uh, completely Absolutely. shape the sound exactly right without again having to reach for an equalizer. That's right. That's and, and one of the things that's, that's great about cloud lifters, whether you're going to use it with a SM7B and SM58 or a ribbon microphone, is you're getting much more of your microphone and less of the coloration of your preamplifier. Mm -hmm. So it's not always just about the noise. We get phone calls. Uh, got a call recently, and the guy says, what is this thing doing? It's not just gain. It just sounds better. What's this thing doing? Right. And, 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 and really, that's what it is. You're getting a Class A discrete gain stage in line before it ever reaches your preamp, but the gain stage literally becomes an extension of your preamp's gain stage, and you're doing so without go going through any distortion potentially distortion-causing components such as capacitors and resistors uh, be because of the way it becomes an extension of the preamps gain stage. Right. So you, you're literally, and especially with the Z products, you're literally turning your mic into mini mics because right. you can just change it and, and, and sculpt it and, and, des and just get it just the way you want it for right. each particular source. And the thing that's so great about it, in my, my view, is just how easy it is. It's just so intuitive. You just right. turn it and listen. That's all you have to do. Right, right. Very cool. So you instantly are expanding your mic locker just by That's adding right. this, this box. And, and, and with guitars, it's the same thing. You know, you, you, you get a, with, there's a variety of pickups out there, a variety of different output impedances on guitars. With this box, you're able to shape that guitar into many guitars mm -hmm. um, and do things with it that you could never do any other way but by manipulating the impedance. And impedance is one of those things that, that uh, people are a little bit um, apprehensive about getting involved with. You know, I, don't, I don't know if I want to know about that. You know? <laughs> uh, but I recently sent one to a popular um, touring act. In, uh, they were on tour in Europe. And the, um, the uh, guitar player um, sent me back a message because they used it with the singer's guitar. And she's like, he said, it's the first pedal that uh, our singer was able to understand in like two minutes. Nice. So <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds better, right? <laughs> it, it, it's just so easy to use. I mean, so yeah. one knob, you just one knob solution. There's, right. It's really simple to right. use. Right. Awesome. Roger, thanks so much for coming in and, and telling us about the, the cloud lifters. I mean, it's, it's the kind of thing that once you understand what they do, you realize you just have to have it. So we really appreciate you being here. Thanks no, it's for wonderful. Thank you, man. Chatting with us today and taking time. My pleasure. And great to see you. Appreciate it. Thank you. You bet. And thank you for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute. I'm Mitch Gallagher.